good morning and welcome to the meeting of the Licensing 2003 Act Subcommittee, London Borough of Newham. Thank you all for joining us uh, this morning um, on the Council's YouTube website. The whole of this meeting will take place via teleconferencing arranged due to continuing issues around coronavirus and to help maintain public safety following the government's recent changes to guidance pertaining to the situation. Members of the public can watch the meeting via the live stream and later by selecting the recording on the Council's YouTube site. You may also access the public papers for this meeting via the Council's website by navigating the site through the following pages. Your Council, Councillors and Committees, Current Committees, Council Minutes and Agendas and Reports, and then select this subcommittee and the meeting date. I hope all of us attending the meeting over Zoom can hear and see each other. So can you please um, indicate that you, by raising your hand, that this is so. So can you all hear me? Can you raise your hand? Yes. Wonderful, thank you. Um, and can the applicant put your mute button back on, please? Thank you. I intend to continue to operate the usual meeting etiquette so that we can all follow the meeting easily and also want to give a friendly reminder to all those joining our meeting via Zoom to please ensure that your microphones are muted throughout the meeting unless you are presenting or speaking. This is in order to limit unnecessary background feedback. If you wish to speak or ask a question during the meeting, please indicate by raising your hands like so. Keep your hand raised until you are acknowledged or invited to speak, as this will enable us to monitor the speaking requests as they are made. I, as the chair, will then invite you to speak one at a time. At this point, please do remember to unmute your microphone. In the event that any restricted items have to be considered or any legal matters have to be um, discussed, the Zoom operator from Democratic Services will place members and parties to the hearing into a private room and any press and public into a virtual waiting room. At this point too, the webcast will be, um, will be paused. So to the first item on the agenda um, is declarations of interest as outlined in agenda pack pages three and four. In accordance with the members code, members is a reference to the elected members of the council. In other words, the councillors on the committee and there are three of us today. In accordance with the members code of conduct, this is a time for members to declare any disclosable pecuniary interests or non-pecuniary interests they may have in this matter being considered at this meeting. Having regard to the guidance attached to the agenda. Okay, so um, I have nothing to declare. Sarah? Uh, no declaration, Chair. Pushpa? No declaration, Chair. Thank you. Agenda item two is the procedures. Number one is, is the introductions, which we'll do in a minute. Uh, then we will move on to presentations and we have a licensing officer who will present that. Members can seek clarification first and then so can the applicant of any matters pertaining to that particular report read out at the time. We then move to the relevant representations. Uh, there are from responsible authorities, for example, the Police Trading Standards Environmental Health presenting their case. We have three representations today. During that time, members may ask questions and so can the applicant and then the license holder, holder presents their case. I'll pause at this point, otherwise it'd be a bit much to absorb, but basically that's how we are going to be running this meeting today or how I'll be chairing it today. So let's do introductions. Uh, my name is Councillor Tony Wilson. I'm the chair of the committee today and I represent Beckton Ward. Councillor McQuana. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Pushpa McQuana presenting Flash Edward, a committee member. Councillor Ruiz. Uh, good morning, Councillor Sarah Ruiz, representing Custom House Ward. Okay, can we take the case officer, please? Uh, Steve Jackson, licensing team, case officer today. Thank you. Environmental Health. Good morning. Ian McConnell, Commercial Environmental Health. Licensing team. Morning, um, Colin Hunt. I'm li licensing officer, and I make representation against his application. Thank you, Colin. Uh, the police. 
morning. <clears throat> Connell Stowe, Metropolitan Police Licensing. Thank you. Um, right, so as this is an administrative hearing, we got a um, hearing under the 2003 Act, we are not trained lawyers. So we rely on the legal advice from our legal department today, represented by... Good morning, all. Umair Malik Legal Services. Thank you, Umair. Last but not least, um, because we, are, we base our decision on written and oral uh, submissions, in other words, what is said during this hearing, we have a clerk behind the scenes who's taking copious notes. Um, I would like to invite the clerk to introduce herself. Thank you, Chair. Nisha, the Thigra Democratic Services. Now, today we're doing a little bit of a, a hybrid um, situation. Uh, we have a Zoom helper, but our Zoom helper today will also be carried out by the case officer. Could you just introduce yourself again, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, it's Steve Jackson, uh, licensed team, also doing Zoom help as well today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is everyone clear on the names and the procedures of how we are going to be running this committee meeting today? Please raise your hands. Wonderful. OK, um, agenda item three, um, and that is on page seven of your um, agenda. Um, would you like to present your case, please, Steve? Thank you, Chair. Uh, the members of the licensing subcommittee are asked to hear and determine an application to grant a new license for um, Buy a Food Supermarket, 1 Unix Tower, Station Road, E15, 1DA. The applicant is a Mr. Gosgirl Dogan and any value represent representations that have been made. An application for the new premise license was received by the licensing authority on the 22nd of April, 2022. This was advertised at the premises and in the local uh, newspaper in accordance with, with the regulations. A copy of the applications is attached as Appendix A. Um, the application is for the following licensable activities. Um, sale of alcohol off the premises only, Monday to Sunday, uh, every day from 11 to 21.30 hours. Um, the council's licensing team have made representation against the application on the licensed objectives of the prevention of crime disorder and the prevention of public nuisance. A copy of their letter is attached to Appendix B. Uh, supporting photo evidence is also attached to Appendix B1. Uh, the council's um, commercial environmental health team has made representation against the application on the licensing objectives for the prevention um, of public nuisance and a copy of their letter is attached as Appendix C. Uh, the Met Police have also made representation against the application on the license objectives of prevention of crime disorder and prevention of public nuisance. A copy of their letter is attached Appendix D. Um, supporting police statement is also attached Appendix D1. Uh, where the premises lie within a community impact zone, uh, CIZ, there is a rebuttable presumption that applications for a new premise license or club certificate or variations with respect of such premises would normally be refused unless the applicant can demonstrate in their operating schedule that there will be no negative impact on one or more one of more of the uh, license objectives. At the hearing, members of the subcommittee would need to be satisfied that the applicant has de demonstrated this. The community of impact of the premises can only be considered where relevant representations are made. This means that if there are no uh, relevant representa representations, the, ap the application must be granted even if it's in within the CIZ. Members of the subcommittee should note that each application within a CIZ needs to be considered on its own merits and that blanket refusals cannot be made. Where the licensing authority decides to impose conditions on a license, whether in a CIZ or not, such conditions must be appropriate and proportionate for the promotion of the license objectives. Conditions should be clear and unequivocal. The Secretary of State has introduced guidance to licensing authorities to which they must regard in carrying out their licensing functions. Members of the subcommittee should note that copies of the guidance are available at meetings of subcommittee. Alternatively, uh, copies can be obtained direct from this uh, committee clerk. Licensing authorities may only depart from the guidance if they have good reasons to do so. These premises um, do fall within the CIZ and a map of the Stratford and Newtown CIZ areas attached to Appendix E. Uh, the premises have uh, not had the benefit of a uh, premise license under the Licensing Act 2003 in the past. However, the premises applied for a new premise license on the 14th of February 2022 and this application was rejected by the subcommittee on the 5th of April 2022. Decision letter is attached as Appendix F. 
Uh, a, a licensing seizure also took place at the premises on the 3rd of May 2022 at the as the premises is currently unlicensed and was observed selling alcohol on Sunday the 1st of May 2022. A plan of the premises attached Appendix G and a plan of the areas attached as Appendix H. Uh, the members of the licensing um, subcommittee are asked to hear the application to uh, the representations of the license holder and any uh, valid representation received from responsible authorities and determine the application. And that concludes the report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Steve. Um, there's just one very quick question I wanted to ask you. Um, on page seven, under the sale of alcohol off premises only, can you just confirm, I know it's further down in the agenda, but just confirm the actual opening hours for me, please. Uh, the opening hours that I have here on the report is 11 to 21, 30 hours. So it's 9.30 in the evening. Right. That's the that's sale of alcohol, sorry. Did you say no, the, no, open the actual opening hours, yeah. Sorry, chat. Give me a second. <clears throat> it's on page 20, if that's a help, Steve. Oh, thank you. My, I'm switching screens again, sorry. It's on page 19 and 20, yeah. Yeah, 7 till 10, I think, is the opening time. Right. 7 till 10, Steve? Yeah, I think. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it's um, 7 till 10. So, yeah, apologies for the delay there. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. OK, um, are there any questions on the reports, um, Councillor Ruiz, you'd like to ask Steve? Not at this moment. Thank you, Chair. OK, yeah. Councillor McQuana? No, I don't have anything. Thank you, Chair. Right, lovely. So if we can proceed. Steve, is it possible for you to bring up the map of the premises, please? Or the area that the premises... Yep, bear me a second, Chair. I'll just bring up the. Do you want the CIZ first or to the map of the area? Map of the area first, uh, so we could see exactly where it is. Okay. I'm just going to share my screen now. Thank you. Can you see that now? Yes, I can. Oh, okay. Right, sorry. Right, so this is the obviously the map of the area where the Unix Tower is situated. Right. Um, and if I show you the front of the premises, this is the actual Unix Tower itself. And the shop front is here. Um, obviously, where the point is on the map there. And if I scroll around, that leads down to Stratford Station and the bus garage and the following way leads up to the Broadway in Stratford. Right, lovely. Can we just go back to the map, the first one you, you brought up, and I would like you to show me in relation to Jupp Road, where, where is the um, premises? Into Jupp Road. Oh, let's see it. Uh, obviously, this is Station Street, Chuck um, Road. If I can assist, Steve, um, Judd Road, Judd Road is the other side of the railway bridge. Oh, the other side of the railway bridge. Yeah. So So there's a bridge right next to the, uh, just up from the uh, Unix Tower. And you go across there and you, you walk into Judd, Judd Road. It's Judd, not Judd, yeah? Judd. G Judd. Judd. So. All right, not, not to worry. I'll I was have... say, it's, it's not, <laughs> it seems to be, like, that's the other side of the bridge, isn't it? I don't think yeah. it's meant yeah, there's a literally a bridge right next to the. Um, yeah, that's down here, isn't it? So yeah. that 
So it's up, up that bridge there. Yeah, that's it. There's the bridge. So this is Jup, up Jup Road here. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's across that bridge. That's on the other side of the premises. Yeah. I'll turn this. Yes, yeah, it's, it's across the other side of the bridge. So it's literally where my cursor is pointing now is roughly where the actual premises is. Right. Lovely. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you for that. If you can clear the screen, that would be great. Sure. Okay. Um, were there any questions from anyone else uh, with regards to Steve's um, report? No, Chair. Um, the applicant, have you any questions regarding the report just read out to you a moment ago? No questions. No, no thank you. Thank you. If you can put your phone back on mute. Thank you very much. So let's continue. Um, can we go to page, we'll take it in the order of the agenda, page 55. Can we have the representation from the commercial environmental team, please? Ian? Thank you, Chair. Uh, the commercial environmental health teams make a representation in respect to this application in relation to the licensing objectives of prevention of public nuisance. Preparing this representation, I visited the area on the 9th of March this year. Seven Station Road is located close to Stratford Station. Nearest residential premises are above, directly above in the, in the tower. Um, we've heard what the applicant is seeking a license for. It's a new premises, so there's not been any complaints of noise or antisocial behaviour uh, in relation to this premises in the last six months. There are six other premises licensed for sale of alcohol within 200 metres, um, which are, I'll just list them, Little uh, in the Mall, Gasco, which is at 8 Broadway, Collins News Agents, which is on 24 to 26 Duran Walk, Noon Fung in the Stratford Mall and Sainsbury's in Stratford Mall and also Iceland in Stratford Mall. The applicant proposes to prevent public nuisance by putting up signage, asking customers to leave quietly, taking steps to prevent people gathering or loitering outside, especially after 9 p.m., restricting the movement of bins after 9.30 p.m. and operating a Challenge 25 policy. The applicant has also proposed that any alcohol drinks uh, less than 5.5% and wine will be sold. Um, I'm not sure whether that means they will not be selling spirits. Um, it's a bit unclear what exactly that means. The applicant hasn't advised whether they will keep the area in front of the shop clear of litter and what action, uh, how, they will, uh, how they will ensure deliveries and waste removal from the shop do not cause a nuisance to local people, and what action they'll take if customers consume alcohol outside their shop. Concerned that the applicant hasn't provided clear information on the types and strengths <coughs> of alcohol to be sold if the premises were to sell high-strength beers, lagers, or ciders, single cans or miniatures, this could make the premises attractive to street drinkers and lead to an increase in street drinking, littering, public urination, and other antisocial behaviour. Uh, and that's our representation. Thank you, Ian. Um, Sarah Ruiz, would you like to um, make any clarifications on that report? No, thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Mokwana? Yes, I just have one thing. Um, thank you for your report. Um, on page 55, the applicant is seeking a license to off sales alcohol daily 11 a.m. to 9.30 p.m with the shop being open Monday to Saturday, 7 a.m. to p.m. and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. So this, okay, I got that, sorry. You said I'll call to that, thank you. That's fine. Okay. Um, Ian, has there been, I mean, this is the second time they've come around for a license. Has there been any conversations had between your department and the applicant? No, we've not had any contact with them. Right, okay. Um, we have other premises, six other premises within two 200 meter radius of, of that one. Have we had any complaints or instances recorded um, at, from your actual department regarding these other premises? Not, not in relation to sort of uh, street drinking. Um, we do, there are reports of street drinking in the area and I, I regularly see 
street drinkers in the area, but they're not sort of linked to any of those particular premises, with the exception perhaps of the one at Duran Walk. There, I, I know there was complaints um, previously, maybe a year or two ago, about people gathering, particularly when football games are on, drinking in the area outside that premises. But that's really in relation to football games only. Okay. Can you tell me roughly um, this premises, how far is it from the stadium, just out of curiosity? Uh, from the stadium? Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how far. Half a mile, maybe? I'm, I'm not sure. Wow. Okay. And of the six, I know the obvious, Sainsbury's and Lidl, but how, out of the others, how many of them are off licences or how many of them are they of supermarkets? Um, so, I mean, Gasca's a small mini market, Lidl's a supermarket, obviously. Um, Loon Fung is a supermarket. Sainsbury's is a supermarket, and Iceland's a supermarket. Um, they, they are all sort of. Uh, even Collins News Agency uh, sells things other than alcohol, um, so they are all sort of small supermarkets. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, that's what I wanted to ask. Um, has um, Steve or um, Colin, have you any questions or the police? No questions for Ian. Okay. Um, the applicant, have you got any questions for the commercial environmental team um, regarding that particular report he's just read? No? 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay, can we go to um, the licensing team, please? Thank you, Chair. On behalf of the licensing team, I wish to object to the new application for a premises uh, license for Unit 1, uh, Unix Tower, Station Road, E15 1DA, on the grounds of prevention of crime disorder uh, and the prevention of public nuisance. The application is for sale of alcohol off the premises only between the hours 11 and 21.30, as we've just heard every day. And the opening hours are slightly different, um, Saturday, uh, seven, oh, to, um, sorry, Monday to Saturday, seven till 2200 hours, and Sunday, 10 till 2200 hours. The premises are situated within the community of impact zone and are designated as a designated in the Newham uh, Council Licence Policy 2020. That states that there is a requirement for the applicant to comprehensively demonstrate that there will be no negative impact on any of the licensing objectives. We don't believe, should the license be granted, uh, the applicant, Mr. Dugan, will uphold these values. This premise has applied for a premises license on the 14th of February 2022 to sell alcohol off the premises between the hours Monday to Sunday every day from 0700 to 2200 hours. Although these hours did not give us a huge concern, letters of representation we received due to the lack of understanding of the four licensing objectives. And, what, and within the application, they did not rebut the concerns of opening a premises selling alcohol within the Stratford CIZ area. This application went to a subcommittee so that Mr. That, so the applicant, uh, Mr. Dugan, could demonstrate to the committee he understood the impact of opening a premises selling alcohol in a challenging area. The application was refused. Uh, as he was unable to achieve this. Mr. Dugan was at the hearing and a decision, <coughs> excuse me, and a decision letter was sent explaining why the application was refused. On the 22nd of April, 2022, the, the licensing authority received a second application from the same person, Mr. Dugan, as this, this is the application in front of you today. On Sunday, the 1st of May, 2022, Senior Licensing Officer Steve Jackson passed the premises on his way home from working at West Ham home fixture match and noticed alcohol being sold in the premises situated at Unix Tower Station Road. He was aware that no alcohol should be sold at these premises as I asked him to do a notice check uh, on his way home or during the day as they were in the process of applying for a, uh, an application again. Uh, Steve Jackson reported that back to me. So on 
Tuesday, the 3rd of May, 2020, I, along with the police, executed a test purchase at approximately 11 a.m. Uh, um, I asked PC Ian Wagstaff to attempt to purchase a single can of beer. PC Wagstaff came out of the premises holding a single can of 9% ABV uh, beer. We entered the premises and noted behind the counter a large amount of wines, also beers in fridges at the rear of the premises. Most of these beers were high high percentage ABV levels. We, pro we proceeded to seize all the alcohol as the premises are not permitted to sell or store for the sale due to not holding a valid license under the License Act 2003. And the breaches are uh, 136, 137 and 138 of the License Act. I have submitted photos of the seizures as um, uh, you've just heard um, and the notices of the quantity that was seized on that day. Our concerns are Mr. Dugan has no regards for the licensing objective, nor understands what opening a premises within a, said, within a CIZ stress area of Newham is. He holds a personal license and he has already gone through the process of applying for a license under the License Act uh, in 2003 in the past. He understands that the license uh, was refused and a very detailed decision letter was submitted to Mr. Dugan and he, as he applied for a second license. He has been he has been discovered selling alcohol without a license while applying. The alcohol was per, sorry the alcohol that was purchased during the TP was also high strength beer that is also associated with street drinkers. This premise is in the heart of Stratford, very near the station where most of the street drinkers congregate, and over the railway bridge in Judd Road. This particular location is very attractive to street drinkers, as empty bottles of alcohol. Uh, prominently dis discarded in close, close surrounding areas. If the subcommittee are not minded to refuse this application, robust conditions must be added to the license to prevent any further issues and prevent the applicant operating outside the law. And that concludes uh, my letter of representation. Since then, uh, just, to, just to take this a little bit further, we, we have um, conducted a PACE interview. Uh, I, I wrote this um, before we done the PACE interview. Um, so we've done the PACE interview and uh, uh, we held it at uh, a police station. Mr. Dugan come with his solicitor. Mr. Dugan um, was very remorseful at the, at the PACE interview. We, there's no decision um, made yet of, of how we're going to be taking this forward. Um, we're still making a decision on that. But Mr. Dugan at the um, PACE interview was very remorseful and understood that he, he'd done wrong. He didn't try to cover it up. So I just wanted to sort of like make, make it clear that Mr. Dugan wasn't sort of trying to um, hide the fact that he was selling alcohol when we were doing the PACE interview. Thank you for your report, Colin. Um, uh, right, two things. Can you, uh, for the, the viewers on YouTube and, and others, can you explain what a PACE interview is, please? Right, so a, a PACE interview is, a, is an interview under caution. Um, so if we're going to take, if, if, if we're going to possibly prosecute somebody, we have to take it down in, under caution. So we, we take them to a police station or, or somewhere that's got the facilities and we record it and uh, they, they can, sub, we sub, they submit the uh, reasons as well. Um, yeah, so, uh, and, and um, if we do go to court, then that can be used as evidence. Right. Okay. Thank you. And the other that you um, on page thirty-two, and it's third paragraph down. Um, so you said he was aware that no alcohol should be sold at the premises, as I asked him to do a notice check. Could you explain what a notice check is, please? Yes, of course. So um, when when do you apply for a premises license? Um, you have to, the applicant has to um, uh, um, display a notice, a blue notice, and in the newspaper as well for 28 days. So there's a consultation period while you're applying for a license. During that consultation period, you have to display a blue notice outside your door um, for 28 days, and you have to put a notice in the local newspaper. So what we do is once an application comes in, after three days, we um, check, we go down there and we check to see if the notice is up. And then after, um, I think it's 16 days or so, um, then we go and um, check again to make sure it's still up. But obviously in, in, in other circumstances, like um, if it's a place where we're walking past 
anytime. We will check anyway to because it's meant to be up um, for 28 days on display. Right, thank you. So my question then, was it up when Steve carried out the check? Uh, yes, it was. Lovely. I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm going to come back to you in a minute. Um, Councillor Ruiz, have you any questions for Colin? Um, I don't know whether this is the right place for this question, but so forgive me if I'm supposed to ask it later. But you said that Mr Dugan was remorseful when he was interviewed. Are you able to say whether he gave any particular reason why he had so uh, broken the law? Um, if I can recall, uh, Mr Dugan had a partner at the time. Um, I don't think he's involved in the premises anymore. I think he's gone, uh, my understanding is, so it's Mr Dugan on his own. And I think it was, uh, uh, he, he sort of explained that they, they both sort of decided to do that and it was influenced by um, his, his ex-partner, shall I say. But, um, I, and, and at the pace interview, I said that doesn't excuse what happened. Uh, but, and, he, and, he, and he did understand that he, he wasn't trying to look for excuses. Okay, thank you, Colin. Thank you, uh, Councillor Ruiz. Councillor McWana, have you any questions of Colin? Not at this stage. Right, okay. Colin, I'm coming back to you now. Sure. Um, you said that all the beer that was seized was over high ABV. Um, roughly at what strengths was, were they going at? Uh, I, think, I think they averaged about 85 to 9%. I mean, we seized one that was 9% and it wasn't like looking for it. Uh, the officer just walked in. He told me he just walked in, went to the back of the shop, picked up one. He, he He's a new officer, so he wasn't sort of like, um, he didn't really understand it at that time. He was very new to do being licensed in police. And um, yeah, he, he decided just to pick one up and go and pay for it. He wasn't um, looking for high strength beers and, it, and he bought a 9% beer. Right, okay. Um, have you had any instances reported on the premises that has come back to your department? Sorry, I missed that. Sorry, sorry. Have you had any incidences um, reported back to your department emanating from this or any of the other um, six stores within the 200 mil, uh, 200 um, metre radius? No. Um, I think um, most of them are do hold a licence that haven't got any high strength beers anyway. Um, right. Yeah, I think I think they all do, possibly. Um, I, I haven't got that information, but they say. Right. So the area that this is based in, you meant, made mention of street drinkers. Um, are there many? I mean, is this, is this something you see in passing every day or is it just occasional? Are there a reported amount of um, street drinkers in that area? It is high, high volume of street drinkers. I go there, um, I have meetings over Westfield on a regular basis, morning, afternoon, evening, um, and, and I park in Judd Road. That's why I know Judd, that's where I park, so I walk across, because that's the easiest place to park. So I, I see that on a regular basis. I would say I go to Westfield to have meetings at least twice a week, I'd say, uh, and over the stadium, and that's where I park, and so I always walk past there, uh, and um, I, I always see street drinkers any time of the day um some some are more than others so like evening you get more but even I, I sometimes been over there at like nine o'clock in the morning and i've seen them i've seen them there mm. and that and they range from like i mean i've seen a few in judd road um and i've seen them walking across the bridge from stratford into judd road um you know where judd road is now yeah yes, so yeah, yeah so That's where this yeah, that where the where this building is it's literally you walk across a road and you literally walk up a um, some steps across the bridge down the other side, and that's Judd Road. And it's a it's a nice little, shall I say, I wouldn't <laughs> drinking area. <laughs> it's not really, but a nice sort of like area under the bridge where they where they congregate as well. Um, and then certainly in in the um, along by the the left hand side of the bus station where there's seating, I see quite regularly where the taxis park. They yeah. they, they they go there, and in Meridian Square as well, and, and sitting on the stairs as well, uh, going up to Westfield as well. So, so yeah, we have a, a definite problem in that area. We have is, five... Yeah, yeah. In my opinion, there, there's a street drinking problem in that area. 
Right, okay. Um, I'm just going to work my way down some of the questions. There might be a little bit higgledy piggledy, but okay. on the day of the seizure, uh, yep. when you went into the premises, um, did you see the applicant on that day? I did, yes. Can you tell me how the conversation went? Uh, so, so when the seizure happened, when the officer went in, I don't think he was there at the time. I'm just trying to think of it was a while ago, but um, I think they may have called him and he turned up. It, that may have happened, I think, or he was around the corner or he was come from an office or something. Was it both um, of them or just um, Mr. Dogan? No, just Mr. Dogan. Okay. Come, 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 and, come up to meet me. And I explained to him what I was doing and why we were doing it. And I and I said of you about his personal license. So you do understand that you can't sell alcohol. You've just taken your personal license. So you know you've 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 gone through the two-day exam or, or, or course. Um and he and he, he accepted it. He didn't try and um tell me that oh I'm not selling it and stuff like that. Um behind the behind the counter there was like a load of wine. There wasn't no spirits. I've got to say, there wasn't no spirits. There was just beer at the back and in the, uh, like in fridges and in the storeroom. And then there was a massive um, counter with loads and loads of um, wines behind that. And I think there was one, two, three, four, about five or six shelves full of wine. And and also um, that there was um, uh, tape across the wine. Um, so it looked like they wasn't selling it. Although, the, although it's an offence to have it on the premises, um, on display. But when we actually looked at the wine, there was wines missing. So like there was, for argument's sake, wines come in bottles of, uh, boxes of six. Yeah. But when we counted them, there was four in, There was four of one particular type, or there was eight, of, sorry, there was nine of one particular time. So they, and there was like, um, uh, like gaps where the wine should have been that they'd taken. So, Although there was a cross, you know, there was tape across it. I think you may have seen the pictures. Yeah. They were still selling the wine, in my opinion. So the tape, because I was a little bit confused about that. So the tape wasn't put there by any of the authorities. No, it, no, no. That that was there when there. we. Yeah, sorry, that was there when we went in there. And why do you think they would want to do that? I think my personal opinion is I think that they knew that they shouldn't have been selling it because they put it there, and they put the tape across, so it looked like. They can't sell it and that that's fine but when we looked at the wine as i explained earlier there was bottles of wine missing there was gaps in it it wasn't there wasn't like six of one type six of another type i you know you know it, it wasn't it wasn't yeah. like that. it was there was all different wines yeah. Different, missing and, you know, yeah. so missing and that so so quite clearly they were selling the wine as well as right. the okay so um my last question, and I know you've made mention of it, that after the PACE hearing and what have you, um, and you, you said you were in the Zoe, so you're not quite sure whether you will be prosecuting the applicant. Mm. Um, what would influence you to go that step further to prosecute or to take a different action? Well, what we do is we, we look at the incident, the, the, how many incidents there were, uh, the, the size of the incident and what what Mr. Do or what the um, in this case Mr. Dugan said at the pace interview whether he was um, trying to rebut everything or, or accepted it and understood what what had happened and I say in this case he understood what happened but I say we uh, we still haven't made a decision because of the size of the seizure as well but also it, it the, regardless of the size of the seizure it was still one incident. Um, and he understood the the impact of that one incident. So, right, okay. Uh, one other thing uh, with regards to the fridges, I'm looking at page thirty five, the first picture. I notice there's like juices and soft drinks and yep. youngsters drinks and the beers side by side. Um, did that alone cause you any concern? Well, well, it does, especially when somebody hasn't got a license um, and he doesn't understand, because uh, obviously under the Licensing Act. Uh, one of the um, uh, for one of the four licenses to, uh, um, is protection of children from harm. So, so if the staff behind the counter don't understand the four licenses and objectives, especially um, protection of children from harm, then they they haven't got that knowledge and that confidence to challenge anybody when they do pick up 
but even by accident, uh, because like you say, the, they were right next door, you know, right, you had, a pint, you had a beer there and a bottle of pop there, shall I say. And a child might have gone up and asked, thought, she, thought they were buying a bottle of pop, but they actually bought a 9% beer, went up to the counter. And the reason you have a license is so you can train your staff to understand the reasons why you, you prevent children. I know it's quite obvious, but, you know, they still need training and they need the confidence to to challenge them, them people as well. So, yes, it does cause concern when you haven't got a license on the premises and you, you're just stacking beer alongside, you know, pop. Thank you very much for your report. Um, I think uh, Councillor McWana wants to come back and ask you a question. Councillor McWana. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Thank you, Colleen. Um, just a quick question in regards to the interview that you carried out, first interview with Mr. Dogan. I mm -hmm. um, understand you just mentioned that he had a partner. Um, whatever the situation may be now, it's um, whatever it can be. Um, did any of them have a personal license or, or a training to sell alcohol? Mr. Dogan had a personal license, uh, and I think I, I, I think his partner applied for the last license. And I think he he had a personal license as well because he put himself down as a DPS. I'd have to check that, but I think that's the situation. But at the Pace interview, Mr. Dugan did say that his partner's not involved anymore. So that's why he's he's doing it himself. Right. And the other thing, I just wondered if we as a committee would like to know when did Mr. Dugan uh, have his uh, test or the training for the license? Um, I don't know when he had his test. Uh, I think it might have been this year or end of last year, but um, uh, I, I can check or I can ask Steve to check to see when he, Please, yeah. he, he got his uh, personal licence. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, out of the offices, are there any questions you would like to ask Colin regarding his report? No, 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 no. Um, the applicant, is there any questions you would like to ask Colin? With regards to what we just heard. No. <laughs> okay, no worries. Thank Very you. Well. Back on, it's all right, back on mute, you go. All right, so this is the last authority that has made representation. Thank you, is that, sorry, thank you. Sorry, I thought you said something to me. <laughs> no, thank you very much for your report, Colin. Um, can we go to Connell, please, of the Metropolitan Police? Would you like to present your report? Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. Um, on behalf of the Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police, I wish to object to a new application for a premises licence for Buy Food Supermarket 1 Unix Tower Stray Station Streets E15 1DA on the grounds of the prevention of crime and disorder and the prevention of public nuisance. Um, you've heard the, the opening hours uh, and uh, hours for out sales of alcohol uh, already. Premises are situated within a cumulative impact zone as designated in the Newham Council Licence Policy 2020, that states there is a requirement for the applicants to comprehensively demonstrate there will be no additional impact on the vicinity in terms of the four licensing objectives. Uh, during the consultation period, an off-duty Newham Council licensing officer saw alcohol being sold from the premises and requested PCE and WAG staff, a Newham Police licensing officer, to carry out a test purchase at the premises. Um, do you want me to read out the statement now, or should I read it out after I finish the rest of the rep? I think you should uh, finish the rep and then we'll go to the statement thereafter. Thank okay, you. thank you, Chair. Um, PC's WAG staff statement deta detailing the successful test purchase of a single can of high strength alcohol and subsequent visit by Newham Licensing and Trading Standards Officers and Police Officers where high strength alcohol was seized is submitted with this representation for the consideration of the um, committee. Um, the next paragraph really echoes Colin's comments regarding street drinkers. Um, statistics for incidents of antisocial behaviour reported to police that are specific to an area within a quarter of a mile radius of the premises postcode are 46 in December, 24 in January, 30 in February and 66 in March. Um, I did check the figure for April, which it was 33. Um, so obviously there's a huge increase um, between February and March and a reduction to what are more or less, although the figures fluctuate, what are more or less uh, 
sort of consistent figures in, in April. Mm. Um, in addition, police would like the committee to bear in mind that anti the Antisocial Behaviour, Crime and Pol Policing Act 2014 gives the meaning of antisocial behaviour as conduct that has caused or is likely to cause harassment, alarm or distress to any person and conduct capable of causing nuisance or annoyance to a person in relation to that person's occupation of residential premises. Therefore, it covers a wide range of offences, only a relatively small number of which are criminal in nature. Um, so that means they would be reported to the police. Um, these figures would not necessarily include groups of street drinkers congregating over the railway bridge in Jupp. I've put it down as Jupp Road, and I was there yesterday, <laughs> and it, I checked it, and it, it is Jupp Road. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I thought. Okay. Um, to consume alcohol whose presence and behaviour may have a detrimental effect on the health and well-being of local residents. Um, just regarding my visit yesterday, there were a few cans of strong alcohol uh, discarded underneath the walkway, um, both the Stratford side and the Jupp Road side, um, including um, an empty bottle of Polish vodka. Um, please consider the action of Mr. Dogan in selling high strength alcohol when his application was still in the consultation period in an area with levels of antisocial behaviour that fluctuate between high and extremely high, demonstrates that he is not a responsible person to hold a license who will promote the four licensing objectives and that the application should be refused. Um, if I may just add, regarding the PACE interview, PC Wagstaff was pre present. Um, he is an experienced police officer who has done lots of PACE interviews. And he, as Colin said, his, his um, perception of it was that uh, the applicant's remorse was genuine. Uh, however, obviously it's up to the committee to determine the outcome. Um, Regarding the actual application, um, he has mentioned some of the uh, things that police would expect to be um, set out and addressed, uh, but obviously there's, there's no maximum percentage ABV, no minimum size for bottles of spirits, etc. So if, if the uh, committee are minded to grant it and uh, attach conditions to the licence, we would like the wordings uh, including those to be set out uh, as in the model conditions. And one last thing, um, it is within the, um, quite close to the stadium um, and the match day condition regarding um, ceasing to sell alcohol if the match day commander instructs them to do so would be relevant in this instance. Um, going on to the, the statement, um, I apologise, PC Wagstaff is, is, has other commitments today and can't attend. He does send his apologies. Um, on Tuesday, the 3rd of May, 2022, I was on duty in plain clothes. I had a meeting with PS Murray and the Newham Council licensing officers by the bus station at Stratford. At about 11 a.m., I arrived outside the Buy Foods shop located at the bottom of the Unix Tower, 7 Station Street, Stratford, E15, 1DA. Uh, shortly after 11 a.m. I could see my colleagues walking towards me. I could see council officers Colin Hunt and Steve Jackson. I noticed that Steve was walking towards the shop. I met with the others and talked around the corner from the store. Steve came out and approached us. He informed me that he had tried to buy wine and they refused to sell it to him. He also informed me that they had definitely been selling it at the weekend as he had seen people leaving with uh, cans of beer. I then left the others and entered the store. I noticed that there was a crisscross of tape over the bottles of wine. I walked around from the counter and noticed a fridge full of canned drinks. These included cans of high strength beer and other cans of beer. I picked up a single can of a beer called Carpaki. This is sold in a black can with gold writing on. It is 9% alcohol by volume. I approached the counter. I could see a female who was sitting behind the counter. I said, do you sell sandwich sandwiches? She replied, no. I placed the can onto the counter and said, it will just be this then. She typed onto the till and then said, one pound 90, please. I handed her a five pound note and she gave me three pounds 10 in change. I left the store and approached my colleagues informing them of the purchase. The council officer spoke to the manager I then assisted in seizing the alcohol. I had to collect a larger police vehicle for the seizure 
for the seizure, such was the amount. The alcohol was sealed in the council exhibiting bags and I drove to the council depot in Jenkins Lane where it was deposited in a secure unit. None of the bottles were broken and a list of the seizure was handed to the business owner. Thank you. Thank you for your report and um, your representation on behalf of Ms. Uh, PC Wagstaff. Um, Councillor Rez, any questions for the police? I'm not at this time, thank you, Chair. Okay, Councillor McQuana, any questions? Yeah, I just just a quick question. Thank you for the report. On the re on the witness statement, uh, as explained that. Uh, one of the officer went in to purchase the drink and obviously we left with the drink without the receipt. Within that time scale, the council officer spoke to the manager and the time the alcohol was seized. What was the time capacity there? Um, I don't know. I, I wasn't present. So perhaps Colin or Steve could, could answer that. But I, I don't know. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, well, um, being present now, after the test purchase was made, we entered the store, um, obviously located the rest of the alcohol within the fridges back of the counter and in the rear fridges where there's some other alcohol found, um, and then literally started to, um, I believe the applicant then came in about, I would say about five to ten minutes after that. And then uh, Colin Hunt um, spoke to him directly, and then the seizure commenced. All right. So while you were purchasing a bottle of drink, no, no, not what, not while purchasing. No, this was uh, after the purchase took place. I would say literally two to three minutes after the purchase by the police officers made, we entered the store, and that's where we located the rest of the alcohol. Um, and then they spoke to the applicant ten minutes after that, and then the seizure took place. All right. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. I can confirm no that. Yeah. Okay, um, Connell, just uh, a question at large. Um, we as a borough of Newham, um, we have a high street drinking problem, uh, which we all acknowledge. Um, you as the police, um, on behalf of Newham, what would you say is your biggest um, problem with this? Um, I, staff-wise, on your side resources and having to try and keep and keep reducing the amount of instances and, and street drinkers that are out there? Um, well, from a licensing point of view, it, it is resources. We are, we are um, at the moment, we are um, fairly limited resources, um, but certainly the safer neighborhood teams who, who cover that area and there is a um, a central um, a Stratford town team now to, to cover that area as well you know that so um, it's difficult if if they you know come across street drinkers um, you know it, there is there is a um, I think it's called a PSPO I'm not sure that's the correct. Public, is it public space? Initials? Yes, protection order, yeah. which I believe means that it can be seized um, even if um, there is no antisocial behaviour as such taking place, just, just purely being in possession. Um, I wouldn't swear to that, but I think that is correct. Um, that, that, and that is borough wide. Um, so there is that option. For them to seize that, um, but generally speaking, it's, it's the you know um, it's just the nuisance value really. Uh, people congregating and you know shouting and perhaps abusing passers-by and perhaps intimidating um, you know women with children. Um, it, it's difficult because people's perceptions of antisocial behaviour are different. Yes. Um, in an area where it is quite high, people might be more tolerant and not report such incidents to police. Yeah. Whereas in other areas of, of Newham, where it's not so high, people people might be more motivated to, to actually report it. So yeah. it's, it's very subjective. Okay. Uh, and my last question for you is... Um... 
The match of the day conditions, could you just elaborate on that and what, what that actually means? Um, right, within, when um, premises are um, within a certain um, radius of the, of the um, stadium, um, we have match day conditions, uh, which, which um, and one of them is that if um, instructed to do so by the match day commander, because there is antisocial behavior or violence or disorder already happening, or if they have intelligence that it is going to happen, um, that match day commander can ask um, licensed premises to take a number of, either to close their doors and keep people inside, um, to stop selling alcohol, or at worst to, to close completely. Um, so, so for instance, for a, um, an off license, um, it, it may be you know to stop selling uh, for the, for a certain duration before and after um, a football match. Right, right. Thank you. I have no further questions. Oh, Councillor Ruiz, would like to come back? Yes, please. Because I I just think that we, in some ways, we're concentrating on street drinkers. But in actual fact, Stratford and Westfield and the area in which this premise, premises is situated is also a magnet for young people. And they, so access to alcohol leads to other antisocial behavior. And so, whereas I wouldn't want to assume, but it would be more difficult for them to purchase alcohol, for example, in Sainsbury's, Iceland or Lidl, then it would perhaps be in a small independent shop. And I, I just think that we talk about street drinkers, but actually there are other people who find it easier to access alcohol, especially in Stratford. Right. So, yeah, yeah that, that is true. Sorry, Chair, if I may just say, yes, that, that is very true. It is an area... Um, which does attract young people and also a number of vulnerable people. Um, you know, so there are there are welfare issues in that in that area as well. I mean, you could you could say street drinkers and adult dependent adults are vulnerable people, so they could be classed into the same thing. But yes, uh, there are a lot of young people congregating around there, um, and that obviously puts the onus on uh, training of staff and perhaps. Um, you know, um, really reinforcing the, the Challenge 25 um, policy. Thank you. Any other questions, Councillor Ruiz? Not from me, thank you, Chair. Any other questions, uh, Councillor McCormer? I don't have any questions, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any of the officers, have you any questions of the police? No? And the applicant, any questions of the police regarding the report he just read? Yes, madam. We have one question. You have questions? Yes. Okay, <laughs> let's hear them. He was the open to this show this last two months ago. Don't forget, it's got to be a question regarding his report. Don't worry, you'll have your chance um, yeah. after we're okay. finished to present your case, but it's got to be a question regarding the report. No questions? Okay, no questions, no problem. No questions, okay. All right. Thank you very much, Connell, for presenting that. Um, so, now, Mr Dugan, you have to explain to us why you believe we should give you a licence. Um, and if you'd like to, with the help of your, your um, colleague, um, just explain why you think you should have a licence and what went so wrong in the past. Because, madam, this is the shop, and I need to sell in the alcohol, not the al alcohol, just the wine, and I want to sell the beer, like the organic beer, the L. I don't want to sell the spirit. Mr. Colin is true, and the police officer, Sam, is true as well. This is a G zone, I understand. I understand the challenge 25, and the high street drunk people is, we was the last uh, two months, the let off the problem the outside, not to my side, but the shopping center, the Sainsbury side, not my side, because I'm, I'm not selling the alcohol now. The old problem is Sainsbury. We've been 
the shopping center. I want to sell the alcohol because I was paid the, my annual uh, expenses 150,000 here. And my customer using the, the, this block, the Unix Plaza, Unix Tower, my customers need some wine and the beer, maybe ale. Maybe I need this weekend selling just the pack of beer and the wine. If it's possible for you, you can give me the license. If not, what can I do now? But I know, I know, I know the uh, challenge twenty-five. I know that this zone is here, and I can, I can take, I can put the, the logbook as well. I can need, and I can buy the personal license about the, my the stuff as well. And what can I do again? The security, much pay. Yeah, all much day. We can take the security to security. So we'll try and ensure security yes. on the match days. And we are very aware of Challenge 25, as well as a logbook, how important that is as well. And we're all going to try, as the whole staff, going to get our personal licenses. And also, touching back on the problem that we've had previously, as all our officers have mentioned, um, it was a... It, the per who applied for our first previous license that got refused was to two people bought the shop, including Mr. Doan and a previous person. Thus, was his decision to buy the alcohol and sell the alcohol. And due to this problem, the two the two um, people split up. Now he's in control. He's he's the person doing this. He, the other person had to go due to this situation. Um, so. It, it was, I have a two questions to one police officer on the source. He has a question I'm going to answer for him. Şimdi birincisi, ben burada içki satmazsam bütün bu problemler mm -hmm. hepsi bitecek mi? He's saying, he wants to ask that if he doesn't sell the alcohol, is the problem of the street drinkers going to end? So he's saying, why am I the exception rather than those other shops? If you see my question. He's saying rather than selling all sorts of alcohol, would it be a would it be a better bet to go for just selling beer and wine? Would it reduce our problem for the community? This is the second question. But right now, right now, you're not supposed to be asking us questions. Right now, yeah. you're presenting your case. So, yes. if you were saying that that's what you want to do, that's what we have to take on board. But you can't be asking us, us if it's best if you sell this or sell that. Right. It is your mm -hmm. chance to really make us understand what mm -hmm. you have to do, how you're going to do it where you went wrong in the past and we can take it from there and then we will then ask you questions all right, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah okay this one is so we're aware of uh, we're aware of the blue badge situation that has to be put on 28 days we've got that as well um like i said challenge 25 very important personal license we're all going to go get that get that sorted logbook is going to be done 100%. And also please, please, touching please. on the um, soft drinks and beer together in the fridge, uh, we will have a beer fridge sorted just where beers are, not combined with any other soft drinks, any other any other drinks beer in total. Fridge, though, beer fridge, and the beer fridge will also have a curtain, which we can close at 9.30 and open at 11 as we're open longer than the hours we want to sell alcohol so that would be closed um other than that touching on the previous problem like i said that person that caused all this problem is now gone it's nothing to do with mr doan um that's totally everything that so, okay, don't worry, that's fine. Right, uh, Councillor McQuana, any questions? Yes, I have some questions, thank you. Uh, thank you for your report. Um, 
Mr. Dogon, can you tell me, um, it's just been explained that you had uh, been selling alcohol with the decision with the partner. Now your partner has left. When did your partner leave? Straight after, three, four days after the incident. Okay, that's fine. Um, can you ask you how many staff are working in that premises? Yes, seven, seven people is working here. Right, how many full-time, how many part-time? Three full-time, four part-time. Three full-time, four part-time. Okay, I, I want to hear this from Mr. the applicant himself, right? So this is a question for him, not for you, sorry. Um, can you name me four uh, licensing objectives? Mm -hmm. Licensing objective, let's have every single Yep. This is challenge 25. And the logbook. And... Hello? Yeah, go on. I'm, I'm here, yeah. I can hear you. Yep. Then we, we, we are careful for the challenge 25. No, I just asked the question. Can you tell me four licensing objectives? I don't know. You don't uh, know. Can I okay, just that's fill out, sorry, uh, Pushpa, going back. Um, did you fill out the operating schedule in the application form, Ms. Dugan? Mm -hmm. Application form, can you repeat that, sorry? Right. On the application form, when he applied to, to get um, the license, did he fill out the application form himself? Application form? No, agent, agency. Agent, agency. Okay. Uh, when the agent filled out the application form, did he give you a copy? Can I be a copy? No. Of no. Right. So your agent has filled out a form with lots of things in there that you should have read. Now, if you had read them, you would have known what the four licensing objectives were. Do you it understand? Okay, I'm going to go back to Makwana and she will continue her, her questioning. Thank, Thank you. you, Chair. Okay, I understand um, the Chair just mentioned about the application form, but even if the uh, your representative didn't give you a form, why did you not request the form? Because you don't know what that person has put down on the application form. No one's told him about um, reading a form. So, so he's saying they gave the us the education to the challenges that we have to look for and the objectives that need to be careful of. That's all he's saying he's aware of. Okay, that's fine. Uh, can I can I come back on uh, more questions later on, Chair? Please, thank you. Okay, Councillor McMahon. Um, Councillor Ruiz, any questions? Two. I well, no, no, no. I was just putting my hand up. <laughs> okay. I don't know whether there's any point in asking this question, but can you tell me what you understand by the cumulative impact zone? Cumulative impact on the answer. What? Can you open up a little bit, he's saying. He doesn't understand. So, so your premises is based in what the council have designated a cumulative impact zone, mm -hmm. which carries a, additional requirements to a premises having a license and, and I need to know that you understand what that is. We call it a cumulative impact zone or a CIZ. Yeah, G, yeah G zone, the criminal or on the... He understands that there's a higher risk of criminal situations, anything more dangerous. That's what he understands from it. And he knows he has to be extra careful in comparison to any other area. Yeah. That's basically. 
Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, just wanted to ask a quick question. Uh, when you signed up for your business in your next house, your partner or ex-partner that's now left, did you have to fill in documentation? Did you have to fill in documentation for what exactly, sorry? When he, um, when you got your next house, Unix house album, yeah. When you leased it, rented it, purchased it, not sure. Did you yeah. not have to fill out um, documentation for it? A uh, documentation of the Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, did you read it? Okudun mu? Yeah. Yeah. And you understood it. Sorry. And he understood the documentation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is your second time in coming in front of this committee for a premises license. Um, so this form that your agent filled out for you, this is the second time this form has been filled out. What really concerns me is the fact that you don't seem to know what is in it. Okay. Bir, bir daha şey yapabilirim. Şimdi ararım onlarla görüşürüm. Söyle. Şimdi ararım tekrar bu konu hakkında hemen bilgi alırım. Şimdi alırım yani. Ama sen bilmek He's saying that he will get information from his agency. Tamam, vermediler now. bana ama. Yani vermediler. He's saying they didn't give it to me. That's why he feels really thing right now. Like he's blaming them rather than taking the blame mm. for not looking after his own business. Mm. Yeah. It's Okay, um, do you know, I'm not going to go through this. So I'm going to now ask any of the authorities if they would like to ask the applicant a question. So if we start with um, Colin first. Sorry, Chair, I think uh, Councillor McGuana had her hand up. Oh, are you coming back? Yes, yeah. please. I've just got two Colin. couple of questions to ask. This is for a uh, uh, question for the applicant, right? So can we just have the applicant answering the question, please? Um, okay. So, Mr. Dugan, do you do you live in Newham or you live outside Newham? I'm living here, in Chingford. Where? Chingford. Okay, you live around here. Okay, right. Um, can you just tell me? I mean, I know uh, there has been issue with the selling of alcohol, but going forward, where do you where have you bought the alcohol from? Yeah, supplier. Right, where is your suppliers? In London, here. Yeah. yeah, but whereabouts in London? What the supplier is called? I have the, this is individual supplier, and the, we can buy the cash and carry as well, the imperial cash and carry. Sorry, what cash and carry? Imperial cash and carry, and we just... have. Yeah. And we was working the already the, the nicer company as well. Right, so you just told me that you buy alcohol from Imperial Cash and Carry. And what's the Cash and Carry? The Imperial Cash and Carry. So you tell me all this up? Okay. Imperial. Yeah, okay. Okay. And uh, the other thing I wanted to ask, quick question. I understand you just told me that you got seven staff, three full-time and four part-time. Can yeah. you just, as, as a committee, we ha as a council, we have duty of care for our residents as well as those who are not living in Yom. Can you just tell me where all these... Uh, um, staff leave how many in Yom and how many outside Yom we don't need the address or anything just a general yeah free free stuff is in, in Leighton yeah one is Tottenham and another one is the the Walton store and other one is Enfield right last question I um, understand you live where your uh, business is, but can you tell me how many uh, schools or secondary schools or colleges are around there that you know? Yeah, two, three uh, college and secondary, I think it's four. Okay, that's I fine. Thank, thank you, Chair. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just going back to the... Um, the 
report that was sent in via the application, sorry. Um, just a, a bit of weird wording here. Have you got strobe lights in your shop? Sorry? Strobe lights. What's, what's those? Blinds? For what? Like? Strobe lights. lights. Uh, right and you'd get like in disco. No, <laughs> no, no. No, madam. This is a normal shop. That's the thing. You've not read it. And it's got here in your representation that, that uh, the system will be able to cope with strobe lights. This is what I'm saying, how important it was for you to read the document that your agent filled out. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to go to Colin now. And uh, Colin, would you like to pursue your questioning? Uh, I, I, think, I think you've asked a lot of the questions. There's one question I would like to ask, though. Can I, can I ask why the, your agent who filled out this application isn't uh, representing you today? Agent I don't know. Okay. I don't know. If... Thank you, Colin. Um, oh, sorry. Have you finished, Colin? Yep. Thank you. Um, Ian, any questions? Sure, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Connell, any questions? Um, just one question uh, to Mr. Dogan. Um, have you seen street drinkers um, congregating around the walkway across the um, the railway when you when you've been at the premises? Yes, not to our premises, but uh, I will see the the other types in a shopping centre. You've you've not seen any by the walkway across the railway to the Jack Road. Uh, not. You haven't. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor McWarner. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Ms. Dalton, um, question for you. Uh, can you just tell me on the committee how long have you had this business for? Two months. Two months. Okay, so yeah. before that, did you have any business elsewhere outside New York? We don't need address or anything. We just need to know where other area did you have a business in? Yes, I also have the shop, there's three different shop in the, like at this shop, the Holloway Road. Hold on, hold on, Edmonton. can you hold on, hold on, three, did you say three different shops? Yes. Similar to what you got now? Yes, similar, 10 years okay. ago. Okay, can you just, okay, so can you just give me just the area where the shops were, please, just the area, I don't need an address. Yeah, Holloway Road. Yeah. Is Edmonton. Other one is Edmonton, 4th Street. Islington and Edmonton, yeah. Okay, can you just tell me why are you selling alcohol in any of these shops? Yes, the Holloway shop, we were selling the alcohol. Just the Holloway shop, yeah? Yes. And okay, last, one, last one is Islington, again, is the organic shop. I was selling only just the wine, organic wine on organic beer as well. The L. Okay, six that's months, fine. Six months ago. That's fine. Thank you very much. No problem, madam. Councillor Ruiz, did you have any further questions? Uh, no, thank you, Chair. Okay. Um, one other question. How long have you held a, a license, a personal license? Four months. No, no, four or five months. But if you've got a shop in Holloway Road that sells alcohol and organic wine in Islington, you must have had yeah, a license before. We were selling the... We, uh, I have the... The business partner and he that had his he, license yeah he's having a license okay are there any officers that want to ask any further questions Sorry, just one just one okay. um I, I might have made a mistake but uh, uh mr dugan when did you say you you started operating from this premises this is April, 20, uh, April 13, starting this business. Open the door, but... What, this in Unix Towers? Yes, Unix Tower. Okay, but we, we, we was by the lease agreement this February, 1 February. Okay, no, that's fine, thank you. Okay. And I was by the old stock, the alcohol stock as well, the, in February. 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Egan. Um, no Steve, would you like to ask any further questions? Uh, it's not a question, Chair. It's just uh, confirming your question earlier from the bundle of councillors in relation to Mr. Dogan's personal license. It Bye. was actually issued from Enfield Council. Um, there's no date associated to that, but obviously, according to Mr. Dogan, it does look like, it, according to the reference number, it's 2022. So, yeah, this year it was granted. Thank you. No problem. Right. Okay, any questions in there or any statements you wish to make? No, Chair, I think you may be in a position to make a decision. Thank you. Okay, so. But would you like to add anything, um, Mr. Dugan, to what you've already said? I'm giving you the opportunity um, just to round up and summarise um, yes. what you first stated. No new evidence, just, just to summarise what you've said. No, I don't want to say anything, madam. Thank you very much. <laughs> you don't want to say anything. I need the license if possible. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank so, you very much. as it stands, thank you. If you'd like to put the mute on again for me. Um, Right, so what's going to happen now is we are going to go into deliberations um, and I will let the clerk or the Zoom, the clerk um, explain <laughs> what the procedures are now going forward. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, so we'll have the uh, Zoom helper, in this case, uh, Steve Jackson will uh, send the invites to place us all in breakout rooms. Uh, when you receive the invite, just click join and you'll be placed into your respective breakout rooms. If you choose not to join, then please remember to keep your camera and microphone switched off as we will still be live um, and a holding slide will be displayed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, once we have made our deliberations, we will come back into this, this room here and then we will give you our decision. So if you can um, apply the breakout room, Steve, it'd be much appreciated and we'll see you as soon as we we get back. I'm just going to apply the breakout rooms now, so please look for in on screen instructions. Thank you. Thank you. At what point do we tell Steve that's not working? I still think he's... Bear with me, Councillor, I'm still doing them now. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you should be seeing that on the screen now.
Saygı da bekleyeceğiz. Sesi yok durdu. Ona kapatıyorsun sözünü orada. Kapatıyorsun kapatıyorsun. Söyle. Ona kapatıyorsun. Just waiting for the others to accept the breakout room. Thank you. Finishing, no problem. I believe that's everyone back in the room now, Chair. Lovely. Thank you, everyone, for sticking with us. Um, we have made a decision, and um, the clerk, could you read out our decision for us, please? Thank you, Chair. Having heard all submissions, both written and oral, the subcommittee have decided to refuse the application. A full written decision with reasons will be provided with the aim of it reaching the parties within five working days. Thank you, Nisha. Uh, the applicant, responsible authorities and interested parties may appeal against the decision to the magistrate's court within 21 working days. Mr. Dugan, thank you very much for uh, coming today and presenting your case. Um, it's a it's a shame that it wasn't granted this time around, but you are more than welcome to come back to the committee and hopefully you will have a better understanding of what's involved in the process. I wish you luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for um, all our YouTube listeners. Um, it's been a, an interesting hearing and I hope to see you all again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.